Okay, so table saw yesterday we covered the parts so you guys should have all those down. Today we're going to cover the uh, safety uh, notes on the on the front side of the paper. All right, so we're going to go through it. Um, number one, want to operate uh, with the search permission after you receive the instructions. Right, you're getting that today. I definitely want to know uh, who's back here, so I definitely want you guys to ask permission uh, to use the machine. Okay, you're going to have to have permission, and also when you cut, you're going to have a helper. Okay, standing behind the machine, catching the boards as you make your cut, okay? And they need to also be okay on the, on the saw, which they probably will be since everybody passes these tests eventually, okay? So, make sure you have a good helper with you too, all right? Remove jewelry, eliminate loose clothing, confine long hair. With our guard down, okay? A very, very small chance of anything getting caught up in here, but still, okay? Make sure you don't have any loose dangly things around the blade, okay? So... Three, make sure all guards are placed and operating correctly. Okay, we've got this guard right here. This is our main one. Okay, it covers the blade. Pay attention, please. It covers the blade completely. Okay, there should be no way, all right, anything gets in there. Okay, now remember, uh, if we have to cut anything smaller than an inch and a half, okay, inch and a half wide, we're going to have to take the guard off. And if that's the case, get me, I'll come back with you, and we'll make the cut. Okay? So, eye protection, of course, that's number four, you guys know that, glasses at all times, okay. Five, make all adjustments and remove straps with the machine completely stopped, okay. So if we're going to adjust the height of the blade, adjust the, the bevel on the blade, okay, adjust our fence, any kind of adjustment like that, machine is off, okay. Machine is off, all right. Adjust the blade three-eighths of an inch above the wood or even with the gullet of the tooth, okay. So. What is that? Alright, I'll show you what it is. So, right here. We want to raise the blade up. So, this little valley right here in between teeth is called the gullet. Okay, and if that is even with the top edge of our board, like right there, okay, that gives you about three eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's where the number's coming from. And that's where the, the term gullet's coming from. So, right there. Okay, if you have it too low, like right here, you're not going to get the cutting edge coming all the way through the piece of wood to make the cut. It'll cut it, but it's not going to be very clean, okay? But if you have it raised up way high on something like this, it's just not necessary to have that much blade out, okay? So align it, no matter what the thickness is, okay, to where the gold of the tooth is just even with the top edge of the tooth, okay? Just like that. That's something you'll have to change with different thicknesses, okay? So make sure you do that, okay? Uh, seven, select the proper blade and install the teeth pointing the proper direction. Okay, now I'm going to be changing blades if we ever have to do that, but just so you know, okay, uh, the cutting edges of the blades, which are these guys right here, are always going to be facing back towards you. You turn the saw blade on, it spins this direction back towards you, okay, and the saw blade cuts right there. It also kind of helps hold the piece of wood down on the table, okay. So if you're ever installing a blade, maybe out here at home or something like that, or helping me, right? Cutting edges are always back. Okay, if we go the other way, okay, we're not going to hit our edges. It's not going to cut. Okay, it's going to cut, but it's going to burn a lot. Okay, so um, there's different kinds of blades too. There's multi-purpose blades, which is what we have here. There's blades for cutting plywood. There's blades for cutting other materials. Lots of different types of blades. So. Um, Eight, never saw freehand, always use a fence. Okay, well, what, what's that mean? Freehand sawing would be if you are trying to make a cut like this without using our fence, okay? Just like this, okay? You always, always, always have your board butted up against the fence as we make our cut, okay? We never, ever, ever freehand, okay? We cannot keep it straight like that. If you try and freehand saw it like that, you're going to get off, off track. And if you try to move it back in line again, you're not going to be able to do it because the saw's got a lot of power and it'll, it'll, it'll overpower you. You won't be able to push anymore and it's going to end up kicking back on you, okay, and going who knows where, okay? So never, ever, ever freehand, okay? We always use our fence when we're making our cut, okay? Uh, nine, never overreach the saw blade, right? So as you're making your, as you're making your cut, right, we push along with our our hand or our push stick, we don't have to reach all the way over the, the saw blade like this, right? We can stand right here just to the left, make a cut just like that. We should have a helper on the other side pulling the pieces through when we do this. Okay. So. All right. 
Stand to the left side, not in line with the blade. Okay, so if we stand on the left as we're making our cut, okay, if something does kick back for some reason, is it going to hit us? No. Probably not as likely to hit us, no. Okay, it's going to go back this direction, okay? If we stand directly in line with the saw blade and something kicks back, where's it going to go? Into us, yep, it's going to hit us. So make sure we are standing to the left, okay? Make sure we are standing to the left. All right. Whether you're right-hander or left-hander, it doesn't matter. You're going to be standing to the left hand of the saw. Okay? Doesn't matter. All right. Uh, Eleven. The push stick should be used when hands come within six inches of the blade. So if you're making a cut, okay, where you have to, um, you're cutting six inches or less, okay, on your scale here. Six inches between the blade and the fence or less. I want us to use a push stick. Doesn't matter to me which kind you use. You've got lots of choices. Okay, but I just want you to have a push stick, okay? That way your hands are totally up and out of the way. All right, if you have more than six, okay, I'll just go do eight just for example. All right, I don't mind if you use your hand, okay? Because if you are sawing, all right, you've got a lot of room out here to get your hand. Keep your hand tight up against the fence, okay? There's a lot of space right there. Okay, there's a lot of room, there's a lot of space. You guys move. You move over here, please. You guys have been doing a lot of talking. So, move your hand out there, okay? You know if you to touch the blade, it's going to stop anyway, so you don't have to worry about it. But, out here is a lot more safe. More safe, okay? So, what do we know? 12, okay. So use a rip fence, ripping, and a miter gauge, or a crosscut box for crosscutting. Okay, ripping is the the, the main uh, cut we're going to use this saw for. Ripping is cutting with the grain, right? So this way, okay. Crosscutting, we can crosscut if we have our miter gauge. Okay, so for example, we have our miter gauge. Slide in our table. I would have a line drawn as to where I was going to crosscut it, right? I'd clamp my board down. I would push it through just like that. Okay, now we're probably not ever going to really cross cut on this anyways though, because we have our miter saws for cross cutting, and then that big machine right there against the post, that's called a panel saw, and that is for cutting plywood panels, okay, across the grain. So we probably won't ever have to rip on this, or cross cut on this machine. But we can, just in case, okay, just so you know, all right. Uh, 13, stop the machine, lower the blade, and clean up scraps when you're done. Okay, don't leave it a mess like I have it right here. Okay, Just clean it up when you're done, lower the blade all the way down. So when the next guy comes to use it, it's down. Okay, I don't want the blade sticking up. Uh, 14, never cut a student's project without permission. So like I say, ask me. 15, when ripping a jointed edge, it must be placed against the fence. All right, well... What is a jointed edge? Okay, we have a machine over there, that green one, that's called a jointed edge. And we haven't got to use it yet because I'm having a hard time getting a replacement knife for it. Okay, which is a whole other story. Okay, but usually that's the machine that we use uh, right off the bat when we are uh, cutting our pieces. So what it does is it puts a straight edge on a board. Okay, whenever we do that, uh, we want a straight edge so we can go to a saw and make a nice square straight cut. Okay, usually that's the first thing we end up using. Okay, so. What a joint edge would look like on a, a, a two by piece of material like this, right? This would be our jointed edge, okay? This would be our non-jointed edge, okay? So, can I help you? Guess not. All right, so, make sure your joint edge is always against the fence, because that's going to be the straight edge, okay? We put a straight edge against a nice straight square fence, the resulting cut is going to be straight and square, okay? Um, uh, 16. Set the fence for the exact size needed. Example, if you need to set uh, need one inch strips, set the fence at one inch. Okay, for example, if I want to cut nine inch pieces, for example, I'm going to say, I'm going to leave this set at, set at nine. <coughs> Always set what you want, okay, between the blade and the fence. So, in here. 
Okay, the reason being is if you have to make multiple cuts at that same dimension, okay, it's right there and it's set. You can just run your boards through and make multiple cuts. If you set it to where the dimension you want is going to be outside of the blade, okay, or uh, you make a cut, the width of the board is going to change, right? You go to put it up again to make another cut and it's not going to, it's not going to give you the same thing, all right? So, always between here and between here. Remember you have this to look at, okay? Use the right side uh, ruler. You can double check with a tape measure if you want to, if you want to do that. Go right here, pull it out nice and nice and far. Put that against the, there, please sit right there. Right on the other side of that white. Over there, please. There you go. All right, thank you. Right there, okay, so you got nine inches, and then you check the other side, you got nine inches there too. Probably won't have to do it, but if you want to from time to time to check if everything's cool, that's fine. All right. 17, if you need an assistant, they must be cleared on the table saw. Now I've instructed permission. Okay, so we kind of covered that already. 18, material must be kept tight against the fence and the table. So, when you're making a cut, right, you need to make sure that your board, like I said earlier, is tight against the fence tight against the table. Okay, we don't want to be cutting like this, cutting like this, going like this or like this, going nice and straight. Okay, nice and straight, nice and square, just like that. All right. Uh, 19, kickback can be caused by three different main reasons, okay? Material is not kept tight against the fence or the table. So like I just showed you. Okay, something like that. And you try to get it back in line, that's not going to happen. You're not going to win trying to battle that saw blade, okay? Uh, B, material is not pushed clear of the blade. So meaning we make a cut, okay? And we just leave it right there, okay? It moves somehow, saw blade catches it, boom! Ends up kicking back, all right? And then C, material has a warp, a twist, a crack, or other kind of defect, okay? You guys should get in the practice when you grab a long board from the back room there. So take it and look down the edge and see how straight it is. Okay, if it's not very straight, then let me know, okay, and we can, uh, I can help you out with it. Boards that are warped or twisted, as you go to feed it through the saw, okay, it's going to have a harder time cutting when it hits the warp for the twist, and it's going to go a little bit slower. The machine's going to have to work harder in order to cut it, okay, and if you're not ready for that, if it's got a real bad warp or twist in it, it could end up kicking back on you, okay, especially if you're using a harder material, like maple or oak or something like that, okay, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, 20, never use the miter gauge and rip fence at the same time, okay? So what that means is, like I say, you can cross cut with this, all right? Let's say I was going to cross cut with this. Let's say I was going to cut this piece right here, going to cross cut it, all right? If I was going to cut this, I would not want to butt this edge up against the fence, okay? If I did this and made my cut, this could get bound up between the blade and the fence once you push it through away, okay? If I was going to cross cut something, I'd want to move it back so it's clear. I'd have this tight. I could clamp this down too, and I'd go through and I'd push it right through and I'd make it up. Okay, but don't don't do one of those guys. This will get bound up in between the blade and the fence, and then I'll end up kicking it back. Okay. Twenty-one. Get instructor permission before use, which we already talked about. And then twenty-two. Before starting, the splitter and blade guard should be in place. Okay. this out of the way and we're going to make a couple cuts. One thing I want you to write down, I want you to take some notes on these, okay? <coughs> turning it on. Turning the machine on, okay? So first of all, I'm going to write this down, it could be on a press, alright? First of all, you need to turn the master power on, right? Once you turn the master power on, the red light's going to blink. means when the red light's blinking is it's going through its safety check and system checking itself to make sure that it's going to work, okay, in the event of an accident, okay. So if it doesn't check out right, okay, there'll be some, the, both lights will blink and there'll be a, uh, error, it'll be an error message, they'll have to read the book and see what code it is, but 
When the red light stops, then you're good. Green light, solid green light means it's okay to use. Okay? Solid green means okay to use. So then once you have that solid green, you are ready to, um, ready to make a cut. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just make a, uh, make a rip with a shorter piece of material right here. Okay. I'm just going to set my fence to, set it to 7 inches. Okay. I'm going to make my cut. Now I'm still going to use a push stick because I, I want to. Okay. You can use a push stick for a wider piece, okay, still, if it's like seven or eight, that's fine. If you feel safer, go ahead and do it, no big deal, okay. Now, uh, we got to make sure our height is set correctly. Okay, now does that look a little high or a little low? A little low. A little low, right, so we got to move it up. That look better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good spot right there, okay. And we'll bring it back down. Okay, so that's good, that's good, I'm green, okay. So now, have a push stick, whichever one you choose to use, okay, right here, ready to use, okay, so, start, start by standing on the left, okay, don't, don't start the saw blade with the board under the guard, just start right here to the left, okay, now something like this, okay, we can get our push stick right here, ready to go, okay, we can turn it on, pull our push stick right here, and we can feed the board through just like that. Now when you feed it, your left hand is going to act like just a guide. The left hand is just being used to keep the board against the fence. Okay, We don't have to follow the board with that left hand. So you can leave it right there Okay, and just feed the board through and it's just going to guide it and just keep it against the fence. Okay, A lot of times if you kind of follow it, you know, you'll end up overreaching and that kind of thing. You don't have to do that. Okay, Just keep it right here as a guide. This is to hold it against the fence. Okay? So, that is where we're going to start. Keegan, would you mind catching for me? Yep. Alright, thank you very much. So, if it's somebody else, there you go, Dakota, you can hold that. Watch the cutting process. So, anyways, when you have a spotter, as you push the board through, okay, and the boards get to the edge of the table, the spotter is going to put one hand on each and just support them and pull them straight back as you go ahead and Finish your cut, okay? So I'll get my push stick ready. I've got my board not underneath the guard. Start on the left, okay, keep your hand right here to support the, the piece of wood. You can feed it through, okay, feed it through with your right hand, okay, and as you get through and you get your hand equal with the fence, then you can reach over, grab the push stick, and go ahead and finish the cut, all right? Now, make sure when you do that, you keep holding down on this with your left hand. If you let up on this and just let it go, and that's in the middle of the blade, that's going to take it and, boom, going to kick it back. Okay, and that's not good. So make sure that as you reach over to grab your push stick and finish your cut, you keep holding down on the piece of wood to support it. Okay? for you 
you guys before we call our quits here for the day on this. We're back to solid green. I'm going to turn it on and turn it off real quick and uh, see what happens. As you turn the saw off, okay, the green light flashes, all right? We've got to wait for that green light to go back to solid before it's ready to start up again. So if you make a quick cut and you turn it off real quick and, I don't know, you just work really fast and get another piece and get going, if you try and turn it on when the green light's blinking, it's not going to turn on. All right, so you got to wait for it to stop. It's got to reset itself, and then you can turn it on. Okay, so don't turn it off and on, off and on, real fast. It's not gonna, not gonna work out. All right. So, um, yeah, another thing to be aware of too. When you guys are cutting material, make sure there's no screws, nails, staples, any kind of metal in here. Okay, any kind of metal in here. A lot of times boards will have little staples on the very end of them. Okay, or if you're using maybe boards that have been used for something else before, maybe somebody broke off a nail or something like that and left it there, okay? If you go and you try and cut uh, cut through a nail or a screw or something like that with this saw with the safety mechanism on, guess what's going to happen? It's going to trip the blade. Then what's going to happen? You're going to owe me money. Okay, so... Make sure before you cut anything this nice and clean. Most of the material we have is good. It really is. Okay. But take a good look just before you start anyways, just to be on the safe side. Okay. Because if you hit a screw or nail or something metal, boom, it's tripping the blade and then that's going to cost it. All right. So anyways, that's all I got. Any questions? All right. So you guys have about 20 minutes left to class. Go ahead and cut.